Welcome back to Tech Bud Pike. Today, I want to go over the benchmarking results of the Asus Rogue Flow X16 2-in-1 gaming laptop. We did an unboxing of this laptop a couple weeks ago, and we've posted that video already. And since that time, we've done some real-world benchmarking, synthetic benchmarking, we've checked out the features, and we've done a little gaming on this laptop, and we want to bring those results to you right now. But first, a quick review of the specs comes with a 16 inch QHD 2560 by 1600, 165 hertz refresh rate, 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, comes with an AMD Ryzen 9 6900 HS processor, comes with an RTX 3070 Ti, it maxes out at 125 watts and that's with dynamic boost. Comes with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and that's expandable up to 64 gigs. And it's also 4,800 megahertz. Comes with a one terabyte 4.0 NVMe PCIe uh, SSD. Comes with the backlit uh, chiclet keyboard. It's a one zone RGB. And then it also has the Wi Fi 6E um, for wireless. And then it also has that 720p camera and uh, that supports IR for quick access to the laptop. Um, now, I also want to go over something else uh, that ASUS has been doing over the last year or more, uh, some innovations that they've been implementing uh, within their laptop lineup. And uh, we've done a number of reviews of ASUS laptops recently. We did the ASUS Rogue Zephyrus Duo 16-inch gaming laptop, which is right here. And it has this screen pad, which acts basically as a second uh, screen to your laptop, uh, which is very exciting, something that other laptop manufacturers aren't doing as far as I know. Um, we did the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo 15-inch OLED. Uh, same scenario with the screen pad, uh, but it's more geared towards the creative uh, types and not so much gaming, although you could game on it. Uh, the Asus Rogue Flow Z13, it's a gaming tablet. Uh, which is fantastic. I don't think anybody else is really putting out a gaming tablet. And then they have this one, of course, the uh, Flow X16, and it's a two-in-one, and how, it make, how it's a two-in-one is you open it up here, and you can flip it around and turn it into essentially a tablet. Um, so that's awesome. Other laptop manufacturers do have the uh, 360 uh, screen, but uh, they don't have the XG Mobile uh, where you have a, a special connector where you can connect up with a uh, external graphics card. And so I'm kind of looking forward to getting my hands on an RTX 40 uh, series uh, next year, 4000 series next year, and uh, hooking it up to this and uh, see if it works and if it does. Uh, do a little bit gaming and benchmarking with it. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, I, I don't, I'm not affiliated with ACES. I am not, um, they don't pay me to say these things. Uh, I bought these on my own, uh, no help from ACES. Uh, so uh, I can honestly tell you that they are uh, doing things that other laptop manufacturers, some things that other laptop manufacturers are just aren't doing. Um, and they, some of the stuff is really fantastic. So anyway, uh, just keep that in mind when you're out looking for a laptop and if you see one of these, you know, that might fit your needs. Uh, they really are pretty great, I think anyway. Uh, so anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the results of the Asus Rogue Flow X16 2-in-1 gaming laptop. This is the 720p camera on this laptop. I will tell you it does support Windows Hello for easy access and that's worked pretty flawlessly for me. I'm gonna go ahead and type on the keyboard here and see if the mics pick it up. Just a little bit, I've already done a test on it, but the camera, uh, it's not the best. Um, so anyway, there you go. We're going to check out uh, the speakers and see how loud they can get. You have some um, shortcuts here, keyboard shortcuts, uh, to control the volume. And then you can mute your mic here and then obviously uh, launch Armory Crate. 
I'm going to go ahead and start us off here. And we'll go up to about this comes with the i7 11800h processor 76 rtx 3070 that maxes out at 115 watts 16 gigabytes of ram at 3200 hertz then it has that 16.1 qhd 165 hertz led display with g-sync at 300 nits of brightness. i'll go all the way down to the mute here you know it doesn't get as loud as i thought it would um and I've drained my games and whatnot. Um, it, it just doesn't have that real volume boost uh, that you would expect, but it's not bad. Asus has an application called Armor Crate where you can go in and configure the settings of the laptop depending on what you're doing. It has a number of modes, silent performance, turbo, which we are going to go to. Then it has this manual mode here uh, where you can really uh, do some setting configurations. Um, but we're going to not do that. We're going to go to turbo here. Uh, you can also monitor some of the stats here, CPU, GPU, fan speeds. You can go over to the system configuration here and, um, uh, uh, configure the manual, the panel overdrive, multi-zone backlight control. We'll, uh, talk about that later. Uh, this laptop does come with a muck switch, so you can go from standard to ultimate. For gaming, it does require a restart of the laptop, and then you can configure some uh, keyboard backlighting uh, through the app configuration. All good stuff. Um, you can monitor memory and storage as well. So lots of stuff in here to take a look at. It's nothing we haven't seen before. Nothing's changed really since last year. So uh, there you go. We did a screen test here with our Spider X Pro, and we got 100% of sRGB, 92% of Adobe RGB, and 100% of P3. So the screen here is made up of mini LED, and under the armory crate here, you have a backlight control. Uh, you can move it from one zone, uh, where you can get 1100 nits of peak brightness, but it op the zone operates as one, and it's more like a traditional laptop. But if you go to the multi-zone here, let me just hover over that. Hundreds of mini LED zones operate independently, dimming dark areas and screen deeper blacks, reaching up to 1100 nits of brightness. Um, and uh, areas of vibrant, punchy colors. And I will tell you, uh, that is true on some games. I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn and Plague's Tale Requiem, and the colors were just vibrant. They just popped, uh, which made the game, for me, more enjoyable. So just keep that in mind. You have some uh, configuration options in the system configuration under the backlight control. So anyway, there you go. The screen itself is very responsive. It's a touch screen. Let's go to uh, Mission Impossible here. Turn up the volume a little bit. And... It's a nice way to view content on this particular laptop. We ran Cinebench and our CPU multi-core score was 14,572 and our CPU single core score was 1,578. We used 3D Mark uh, to perform some synthetic benchmarking. Um, we started with Time Spy, Fire Strike. We did a CPU and storage benchmarking. For Time Spy, we got a graphics score of 10,630, CPU score of 10,970, and a online score of 10,679 compared to others where the average was 10,304. So we got a great on that. Fire Strike, we got a graphics score of 28,227, physics score of 27. 719 and a combined score of 13,237 and a online comparison score with 25,293 where we got a score of excellent. Our CPU profile you can see here max threads at 7,531 all the way down to one thread of 957. You can see some monitoring here. 
And then our storage benchmark score was 2657, and you can see the different tests that it did, uh, that it performed, and the uh, results of those. We performed some CPU and GPU benchmarking leveraging Geekbench 5. We'll start out with the CPU scores first. So our single core score was 1614. Our multi-core score was 10,000. 344. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here so we get some more details around the single core performance. And you can slow this video down if you want to look at these in more detail. Multi core performance. Here is Geekbench 5's GPU benchmarking score. The OpenCL score was 124,696. I'll scroll down here and just remember this is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti with 8 gigabytes. You can look at these in more detail here. Okay, we're going to stay on this for a couple of moments. We played a number of our favorite games um, and we wanted to capture the FPS scores of each of them. The laptop was set with the MUX switch switched over and then um, the games were set on Ultra. And here are the games. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Gotham Knights, Plague's Tale Requiem, Spider-Man the Remastered Version, and then Star Wars Battlefront 2. And here are the scores that we got. For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, we got between 125 and 135 FPS on average. Cyberpunk 2077, we got between 65 and 80 FPS on average. Gotham Knights, we got between 80 and 95 FPS on average. Plague's Tale Requiem, we got between 70 and 80 FPS on average. Spider-Man, the remastered version, we got between 115 and 130 FPS. Quite a range there. And then... Uh, for Star Wars Battlefront 2, we got between 170 and 190 FPS. So uh, all very playable. Uh, it was fantastic. We're doing some benchmarking using 3D Mark Speedway. And we're checking out the temps of the laptop right below the screen but above the keyboard there. And we're hitting around uh, 40... 1 to 43 Celsius, just depending on where exactly we point our indicator here. So, uh, and then down on the palm rests, we're looking at around probably 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. I also want to turn on the, check out the sound levels here, the fans. All right, we're looking at around 53 decibels on the fans at around high. So that is the Asus Flow X16 2-in-1 gaming laptop. Lots to like about it. Uh, plenty of I.O., plenty of opportunity for upgrading. It has the port here for an external graphics card uh, with the XG Mobile, so that's pretty cool. I'll be interested to see if this... How this laptop performs with next year's uh, NVIDIA graphics cards that are coming out. So that'll be cool and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the keyboard was good. The trackpad was nice and large. Um, but I think the real hero of this laptop was the screen. Uh, the colors popped. It was fantastic to use during gameplay. And I loved using it uh, while watching uh, content uh, like movies, TV shows. Netflix and all that. So I, I think that's the real hero. I think the real downside of this laptop is the camera. It's a 720p and it was terrible. I thought the mics were really bad. So anyway, keep that in mind. The speakers were mediocre. They were all right. So uh, is it worth the money that we paid from Best Buy? We got this for around $3,000, give or take. Um, there are other uh, better performing laptops out there for a lower price point, but there's so many features of this laptop. I don't know. I, I, I would say if you're looking for something around the 3000 mark, uh, a gaming laptop, then I, I think this should be in your list of laptops to take a look at.
Anyway, uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from Tech by Pike, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. It helps the channel. Not only that, it gives us an opportunity to bring more videos like this to you. And for that, we thank you. Until next time.